Hello! In my last video we took a look at the basics of drawing objects in isometric. Today we'll take that one step further by learning how to draw shapes that have holes, curves, or rounded edges. There are actually a few ways to do this. One method involves drawing an isometric square with the same dimensions as the circle that you want to create, then bisecting it one, two, three, four times. You then use a compass to connect these two midpoints and these two midpoints. Next you would draw a line from this midpoint to this corner like so and do the same on the other side, then position the compass where these lines cross, set the compass to this midpoint, and use it to fill in the remaining quarters of the isometric circle. Then the red construction lines would be erased, leaving only the circle. This method is fine when you must draw a circle that's very large, or very exact, but I think it's a pretty complex way of making an isometric circle. You can also use a template like this one made for drawing isometric circles. You simply need to draw two construction lines that mark the midpoint of the circle, line the template up with those lines, and trace the template. This is simpler, but not everyone has one of these templates on hand. I'll show you how I do this, but first it may help to take a closer look at what's going on here. Observe the isometric cube. From our own experience, we know that each side of a cube is a perfect square, and if we're looking at one side head-on, it would be. However, when we look at a cube from an isometric perspective, we don't see one side head-on, we see three sides that are each slightly askew. We could call these sides the top, front, and right sides of the cube. Each of these sides looks sort of like a square that's been pinched, and depending on which side we're looking at, it appears as though the square is being pinched from a different direction. The top looks like it's being pinched from above and below, the right side looks as if it's being squished on a 30 degree angle, and the front side looks as though it's being squished on the opposite 30 degree angle. The same deformation happens to a circle in isometric. And like the square, the circle will appear to be squished from a different direction depending on which side of the object it's on. When we're looking at an isometric square, we can see that two of the corners form wide, obtuse angles, and the other two corners form tighter, acute angles. If we were to draw our isometric circle on this square, the ellipse would be narrowest in the acute corners of the square and widest in the obtuse corners. This holds true no matter which side of the object we draw the circle on. The same holds true when we're dealing with curved edges on a solid like fillets or rounds. Depending on which side of the object has the curve, the ellipse will sometimes be narrow and sometimes wide. Carefully study the edges of the object you want to draw to determine how you should squish your curves into isometric circles. Practice on simple curved objects like cans, bottles, batteries, or pens. By getting comfortable with the way these curves behave in isometric, you can learn to draw isometric circles pretty accurately without the use of a template or a complicated scaffold of construction lines. Like with anything, it'll take practice. Good luck!